Hi everyone, Piet Kalemeen here. I hope you're having an awesome day. So welcome again in a new video in this wearable design project. We're going to design a wearable heart rate sensor, as you will know by now. Main focus is on small size, but also wireless data transfer. Now, today's video will be about connectivity. The previous video we have been looking into finding the correct sensors to do exactly what we need to. Next up, we need to send that data wirelessly to some kind of application, could be a cloud application, could be an iPhone, a tablet, what, whatever you could think of. Um, but we need some kind of controller and modem to do that. Ideally, we want to have that integrated in one and the same module. Now, there's two options here to go. Either you work with a chipset, you implement it completely on your own, or you work with pre-certified modules. I'm going to show you what the two options are there. First of all, I would like to show you the inside of a well-known wearable. This is what the inside looks like. And of course, this is all custom designed. Um, we see here that there is a Bluetooth chipset. It's the NRF Nordic uh, 52A32. There's a lot of uh, passive components next to it. So if you're relatively small in size, the best way to go, of course, is to put a chipset and then to put some uh, passives and all the needed components around it. Now, Interesting chipset always, if you're looking in Bluetooth, low energy uh, is the Nordic series, let's say. Uh, the 52A33 is a relatively well-known chipset as well. A lot of stuff is available there. And basically you have an internal um, MCU combined with a Bluetooth modem, a Bluetooth low energy modem that is inside. There's even also NFC um, capabilities, thread, Zigbee. So a lot of uh, stuff inside. Now the thing is, if you're going to use a chipset, then of course you, you will have to make a schematic with all the needed passives. There's clocks that are needed, a couple of clocks. There's a matching circuit that will be needed for the antenna. So there's a lot of stuff to get right. Also in terms of PCB layout, um, yeah, I'm not going to show you uh, the complete inside, but if you're interested, you can find these documents on Nordic website. But there's matching needed, um, so layout will have to be done correctly. So. A lot of stuff involved. Now again, if you're working on a very small footprint and there's relatively small space available, then this is always the, the best way to go, let's say. Uh, so if you look back at this, there's practically no, no space available. If you do have a bit, of, bit more space, then it's always interesting to work with modules. Now well-known modules are, for instance, uh, ESP32 modules. Uh, they have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, a lot of capabilities. Now the, the smallest module that I've found over here is 13 by 11 millimeters. So it's relatively small, but still not that small. Now another option could be the Laird modules. Uh, there is a, a Bluetooth series that exists, which are very small. Um, so the, the smallest that they have is 6.3 by 5.6 millimeters. So by, that becomes very small if you would combine it, com compare it to this coin, uh, for instance. There's options. If you have a chip antenna, it's a bit larger. If you're going to use a trace pin, um, then it is even smaller. Now, what is the most interesting thing as well in using modules is that these are pre-certified. So whether you're in America, uh, EU or other, other places on Earth, typically these things will be pre-certified for you. So it will make your life much easier going through certification phase with this module. So the long story short here is if you have space available to put a module, there's a couple of advantages that should not be neglected. So in our project, let's assume that we have that space and that we are interested to work with this one. Now then maybe let's dive a bit deeper into the data sheets to see how these compare in terms of power. So here's the data sheet of that Bluetooth modem series or module series. Let's look at power consumption first. So this is the interesting bit of course where we are interested in. Um, there's a couple of things to consider. Of course, the active mode peak current is an interesting one. It means what is the peak current that we are going to draw when doing a transmission. So it depends a bit on how you configure the module. Um, if you configure it for the highest power, it will be relatively large, um, well, depending on uh, what you're used to, but it will be around 40 milliamps. If you would um, configure it at the lowest power level, then we're looking at 2.3 milliamps. So that's a factor of seven uh, less than that other peak 
current. So depending on how far your system has to be transmitting, if it's really heart rate sensor on the chest and there's a smartphone in the pocket um, near the leg, then I think we could go even with the lowest transmit power and that is very low in power consumption, let's say, or in peak mode. Now there's also an ultra low power mode for that module. So let's say that we do have some, some wake up states and some points where the system would be in sleep. Then we're looking here at 2.6 microamps. Even if you go even deeper, the, the mode two, you're looking at 0 0.6 microamps, but then there's no Ramney tension. I think in our case, that might be one bridge too far. Um, but this is looking good, uh, let's say, in terms of power consumption. Of course, as always, these power consumption values, they have to be tested with your own firmware. Uh, depending on the firmware that you write, you will consume more or less. So if you remember, we started over here. This is our top schematic. Um, so there is a sensor that we already have. There's some kind of an MCU we were talking about initially and connectivity. What we're going to do today is merge these two in just one. We're going to use that layered chipset um, and then the only thing remaining is, that's for the next video, is the power stuff. Now let's look at connectivity. Um, this will be basically control and connectivity combined in one. So this is the module, the layered module that we have over here. Um, it's available even with the manufacturer part. So it's an Altium, so it's a quick search. You can look it up and then there's a schematic symbol. There's a 2D footprint, there's a 3D footprint. So we have everything. In terms of schematics, this is a relatively easy one. The only thing that we need is a bit of supply decoupling. Uh, same thing for the high voltage part. Let's say there's a half high voltage and an IO part that is handled inside, but you need a bit of decoupling. There's UART um, lines that I'm going to bring outside just to do debugging. Um, so we have that on a debug header. Again, we will see in the final footprint uh, in the PCB layout if we can accommodate that header. There's a programming header. This header will be used to flash the module, of course. So it's a small uh, external header. Um, there's also USB present for now. I have foreseen the connections, but not the connector yet. We'll have to see in terms of, let's say, footprints and sizes, if we can accommodate this push-on programming header. If not, we're going to switch it over to a USB connector to have both, um, let's say, charging of the module and programming of that module. Then there's a couple of control signals. These are not uh, finalized yet. It's only the control signals towards our sensing part. So we have our I2C bus. There's a heart rate interrupt. We also have the enable 1.8 volt, enable 5 volt. So these signals are in here already. Uh, the other ones that we will need to add in the next video for power uh, still have to come here. But as you see, this is a very quick integration. In terms of layout, this will be a very easy thing to do. We'll put the module on there. We know it is pre-certified. We only need to add a couple of capacitors, a couple of resistors, and we're done. So that's always the route I would personally go for in a wearable design project. If it is feasible in terms of footprint, that's the most important thing to keep in mind. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something from it. In the next video, we are going to design the power system for this wearable system. Looking forward to seeing you there.